How can these kinetic weapons be made more plausible? I am looking for plausible mechanisms to legitimize or replace the physics-based weaponry used in the fictional world of my latest story. My story utilizes a range of weapons like starship troopers, comma, aliens, etc., including handheld and vehicle mounted. Ultimately, I wish to avoid common tropes found in sci-fi today, like plasma bolt cannons, phasers, etc., and seek to provide my readers something new, possibly using other states of matter in the process. Assault rifle. One idea leverages a coil gun-like weapon, the size of today's typical assault rifle, fed by a backpack filled with some kind of fluids or gases. When the mixed in the gun's chamber, a chemical reaction occurs and the round is launched by magnetic, or some other, means down the barrel. By the time the round exits the weapon, its density has increased, e.g., by a factor of 1,000, to the point where even small caliber bullets have a punch like a shot from a tank cannon. Ship-mounted cannon. Spacefaring warships utilize similar shaped cannons to today's naval battleships, though the ordnance, again, utilizes some unique state found in physics that is devastating, though not planet-killing, and could start off as one state, ideally lightweight, and then create a state that can produce the desired effect. Both of these have hand-wavy power sources that are compact and sufficient to provide whatever power the weapon needs growing larger as the weapon grows in size, of course. My story is not driving the hard science angle, such as the Martian, but I wish to tap into something science-based to avoid creating generic death ray guns in my story. Sadly, my research has stalled after a couple of months trying to derive something remotely plausible. I've gone down the path of researching ferrofluids, neutron degeneracy, super solids, and many other exotic forms of matter. To date, I haven't been able to come up with even hand-wavy sci-fi weaponry that passes even my admittedly low bar for believability. Hoping someone with deep physics knowledge would be willing to provide either a quick suggestion or, ideally, work with me to create two passable weapons detailed above for my story, the assault rifle and the ship-mounted cannon. Tesseract bullets. Imagine a three-dimensional box made of cardboard. Using a hydraulic press you smash it into two dimensions. The flat sheet you have now is considerably more dense than the box that you started with. Your bullets work similarly. They are four-dimensional objects but tenuously so, they are balanced in their extra-dimensional extent like a paper clip folded into a spring. On triggering the mechanism, the extra-dimensional mass of the bullet balanced outside our three dimensions collapses over a period of microseconds back into three dimensions. The resulting bullet is much more massive and possibly unstably so as the atoms comprising the bullet are packed much more closely than they like to be. It is also extremely cold, pushing the mass out through the fourth dimension to make the bullet takes a lot of energy input, and is functionally equivalent to compressing a gas. On relaxing back to the native 3D dimension it is the equivalent of a compressed gas expanding, and endothermic. Fourth dimension aside, there is no free lunch and increasing kinetic energy for nothing violates the laws of physics. One half mv squared needs to stay constant. Let us look at some numbers. Enter image description here. Turning a 1 gram rifle bullet into a 7 kg shot put slows it down to the speed of a fast fastball. It is going to leave a mark, for sure but not blow a hole through a tank. But if you start with a railgun projectile, enter image description here, 7 kilograms at 340 meters per second is like a cannonball as it exits the cannon. That will be the desired wallop. One could make a case that a wallop is a wallop, so why not just shoot things with the railgun projectile? Possibly because the 1 gram bullet might ricochet, or possibly continue through the target and out the other side, much of its kinetic energy retained. Those issues are less problematic with a cannonball.